Hello everyone, I am Raquel and today we're talking about starting an HR department or function for your small business. And by that, I mean the administrative things that you need to put in place before you start hiring employees and even things that you need to think about after you do. Now, I know as a small business owner, you can get real excited about hiring employees. Like you are the employer now, you're the boss. We tend to focus on offer letters and how employees will be paid and the things that employees will take off of our plate. The great thing is that you are growing and scaling your business, but it's so important to know that having a solid HR and employee strategy will set your business up for success. After all, you cannot grow your business on your own and your employees can really make or break your business in so many ways. So you may have zero employees right now, 10, 50 employees, and if so, this video is for you. It is gonna be jam packed with all the things that you need to take into consideration when building your HR function for your business. So get a pen and something to write with so that you can take notes. But if not, stay tuned because at the end I have a bonus giveaway to share and you won't wanna miss it. So let's get started. So I'm gonna break the HR startup checklist into six distinct sections to keep it easy to understand. To really develop a solid HR department strategy, you need to focus on recruiting, onboarding, employment law, compliance, employee relations and general HR, compensation and payroll, and safety. So let's talk recruiting. Finding the right people to work in your business can be a daunting task. In a candidate market, the demand for jobs is low and supply is high. I hate to date this video, but I would say that we are currently in a candidate's market. Job seekers have choices, and with that, they're more selective on the company they choose to work for. Gone are the days where we would place a job ad in the local paper. Candidates are online searching for positions, and most of the time, they're not coming to you. You will have to either find them or be appealing enough to attract employees. Getting things in order like a company profile on a online job board is key. For example, are the employees who are looking for work in your company's industry on LinkedIn or Indeed.com? Does your business have a presence or a profile that includes information about your company or maybe even a short video of a current employee describing how it is to work for your company on maybe LinkedIn and another job board? Once you have an online profile set up, you should ensure that you have items like an employment application, an interview guide, EO1 collection strategy, and offer letters. That way you are ready to start interviewing and hiring and you will not be scrambling to put things together at the last minute. Because all that does is make your company look smaller than it is and it makes it seem like you don't have things together. Not a great first impression for a new hire. The second thing you need to focus on when starting your HR department or function is employee onboarding. Now you may be wondering, how is onboarding different from recruiting? So think of recruiting as hiring, the process of attracting talent, while onboarding is the process that acclimates them into the company's culture and practices. So if you think of it from a sports perspective or an example, recruiting will be more of your NFL draft where teams are picking their players, while onboarding happens after the player has already signed on the team and they're presented with uniforms, rules, procedures, how they get paid, etc. Please do not ignore creating an onboarding strategy at your company. Employees are more likely to stay at your company three to five years or more if they're onboarded correctly. Most companies think that onboarding stops after the first day. You know where employees are handed a stack of paperwork to complete, they turn those in and boom, it's time to put them to work. That's not a strategy. A structured onboarding strategy includes administrative things like completing I-9s on your new employees, running background checks, new employee state reporting, to developing an orientation plan for each of your employees first day, week, three months, or six months. Your employees should have a good idea of what their training schedule would look like and who they will be meeting with and how they will learn key tasks, who are the key leaders in the organization and the company's history, your competitors, and so forth. 
arm them with the information that they need to be successful in their new role. Hey, before we move on, if you found this video helpful so far, please click the thumbs up button below. What it does, it tells YouTube that people are actually enjoying this video and that helps my channel grow so that I can keep bringing content. Now let's get back to it. Now that your employee is acclimated to their new position and environment, there are some items as a business owner or manager that you need to make sure are in place for your employees. Many people don't realize that an HR strategy is not just about focusing on keeping employees happy, but it's also about protecting your company and managing risk from an employment law perspective. So things like making sure that you have an employee handbook, uh, well-written policies, uh, employee files, labor law posters, confidentiality and non-solicitation agreements, etc. Do not be caught slipping because you will learn the hard way. Employees need structure and having those items in place is key to creating some formality in a generally informal environment, especially at a small business. Now let's get into the meat of your HR department. As you employ more and more employees, you will definitely find the need to beef up benefits, training programs, etc. In terms of benefits, I would suggest that as a small business owner, you consider hiring a benefits broker to help you with the benefits that you're going to offer your employees. These companies understand what you're required to offer for your size, and they may even understand what other companies are offering so that you can stay competitive. You may want to offer basic benefit essentials such as medical, dental, vision, life insurance to start with and then when your business grows you can add additional offerings. So aside from benefits you also want to start drafting job descriptions, performance review templates, organizational charts, corrective action documents, and much more. Another thing to consider, and that's a hot topic right now, is employee time off. Are you gonna offer two weeks of vacation, three weeks a year, unlimited time off? Each plan comes with pros and cons and have different financial implications, but definitely they cannot be ignored, especially in this market, because you will not be competitive. Even if your employees stay, you may not be getting their full potential because they're more likely to be disgruntled because they are receiving no time off. So number five is compensation and payroll. You want to be sure that those employees are getting paid right. There are different ways that you can run payroll from systems as simple as QuickBooks to more expensive programs like Paychex, Workday, ADP. You may even consider outsourcing payroll and that may be the easiest and probably the most efficient thing to do until your business grows. Whatever method that you choose, you want to be sure that you're taking the time to create salary ranges, uh, conduct salary market analysis to ensure that your pay, the pay that you're offering your employees is competitive for your industry and that you have a plan on how you will give employees pay increases. Whatever the plan you choose, you want to be sure that it's fair and possibly based on business outcomes. That way your employees understand their stake in the success of the growth of the business. Last but certainly not least is employee safety. If you have employees, you need to have workers compensation at the very minimum. Employee accidents can cost you and it's important that you're shielding your business from that risk. You need to take some time and outline what your safety procedures are. This plan varies by type of business. For example, you may run a restaurant and you need to train employees on how to avoid slips and falls or cutting safety, or maybe you're in an office environment and you need a plan in case of a fire at the office. All of this is super good stuff, but it takes time to develop and ensure employees are trained on these procedures. So those are the six major categories I would say will really help you to start with developing your employee programs for your business. I know this was a lot of information, but no worries because I have packaged this information into a great free checklist that can be downloaded directly from my website. And I provided the link below in the description box. All I ask is that you give this video a thumbs up below. See you all next time and don't forget to subscribe to join the fam. Bye and I'll see you in the next one.